Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, it's the Wheels Bills fan. And <laughs> this is our, it's our family vlog channel or whatever, but if you're used to seeing our videos, this one's gonna be different. We're talking about timeshares today. This is the worst. We're gonna go into detail on our experience and then I'm gonna share the actual offers they slid across the table and break the numbers down and really kind of show what they are. So yeah, if that sounds boring to you, feel free to not watch, but. I think it's, it's anyone should watch this because we got sucked into it. Yeah, we and did. I think it's, that's how they get you. It's an interesting story. Yeah. For anyone that is on their way to a timeshare pitch, this is gonna be very insightful, very helpful. So make sure you watch to the end. We got a lot of really good information for you. So. First of all, what are you drinking? Oh, uh, well. We went to Trader Joe's, which is one of our favorite stores, yeah. and picked up one of those six packs and just grabbed individual beers. I've got this, well, Joseph's Brow, Joseph's Bro. <laughs> it's a Hef, very good beer. Traditional Hef taste, but there's a little bit of a zing to it that I love, mm. so. And get... I'm having a citrus wheat ale from Sierra Nevada. I haven't tried it yet. Let's see. It's not bad. Not as good as that one. So we're walking through Bass Pro Shop. And turns out that Bass Pro partners with a company called Blue Green Vacations. This is a timeshare company. It's not a hotel business. It's a timeshare thing. Which we didn't know that until after we had paid the money. Well, we're get, you're getting ahead of the story now. <laughs> I know, but... You're going <laughs> to... Just so people... We didn't know it was a timeshare. Continue. Okay. Go. <laughs> so we're walking through Bass so, Pro. And we're... There's this booth set up. So there's a couple people over there. And they're like, hey, you guys want to take a spin for a free prize? And it's one of those slot things. You pull the lever, the three things spin. And if they line up on the same thing, you get a prize. So we're like, okay, this must be some Bass Pro promotional thing or who knows what. So there's five of us in the group and we all take a spin and four of us get, you know, the sevens in a row or the, the whatever thing, four out of five of us got jackpot, the jackpot yeah. thing or whatever. Which the guy, I yeah. asked him, I was like, oh, how many people today? He's like, oh, I think only one person is one. Come to find out they have it totally rigged to where we couldn't at least that. one. We don't know. We don't know. It just seemed like how the people behind us though won. Okay. So yeah, who okay. knows? I think it's rigged. Whatever it was, it was like, okay, what's our prize? And so they basically say, for 300 bucks, we'll give you a, a four-day, three-night stay at a resort. You know, and here's your choices all across the country. So we're like, okay, that sounds pretty good. And they're like, but wait, we'll also give you $50 Bass Pro card if, if you want to sign up today. So we're like... You know, we're doing the math room with that. That's pretty cheap. We we stay at hotels, we do staycations and all that, and it's like that's a pretty good deal. And then, and we knew there was some kind of catch, but we still were like three hundred bucks for four night or four days, three nights. Yeah, let's so just do it. It was just it was like cool. You know, we we wanted to do some staycations here in Las Vegas, so we thought this could be a really cool opportunity. And then me not being someone to take an initial offer from any, anyone, I say, well, what can you do to sweeten the deal? And they said, oh, we'll give you another $25 Bass Pro cards. And, ah, okay. And we ended up signing up because it just seemed like a lot of fun. And, <clears throat> oh, oh, it was $50 gift, gift card to Bass Pro plus a $200 MasterCard. Just 200 bucks yeah. on a MasterCard. And then they threw on the, the, the other $25 Bass Pro card. And so the... at this point, we're like, okay, that's $275. Bucks. Yeah. And... And it's only coming to us. us. Three hundred. Yeah. yeah. So I was like, okay, for twenty five dollars out of our pocket net, we could have this three night stay at a at a hotel of our, you know, from the choices available, and it just seemed like, why not? This is too good not to, not to do, mm -hmm. and we just did it. We and I think the whole time I was thinking, this is incredible. I, I mean, what what are they promoting? How are what is this? Or is there a? Yeah, there was no nothing that said timeshare or. Yeah. So the lady, club, any of that. the other lady who was helping this guy out was like, okay, well, let's go through the contract or whatever. And she's going through, there's no red flags popping up. I'm trying to pay close attention. And 
And then she gets to this two hour, you got to sit at a two hour presentation that talks about these vacations, vacation packages. And it's still, we've never done a timeshare thing. So it never occurred to me. And I'm like, <laughs> okay, two hour presentation, whatever, like yeah. easy. So we sign up and then later, you know, I'm Googling and stuff. Then we realize, oh, this is a timeshare thing. And I, at first I was like, oh, we got suckered. But then I remembered it's still going to be 25 bucks. That's all. And mm -hmm. we're getting... And a couple hours of our time. Yeah. Two hours of our time. We're like, oh, well, we've never done a timeshare presentation. We've never been interested in one. And we thought, let's just go see what this is all about. It, it could be kind of fun. To go back, we had a, ch a choice of four different resorts on, in Las Vegas. The Sahara. Tropicana. Tropicana. Their own resort, which is called Club 36. And then there was one more I can't remember. But they, if you go to Club 36, which is their their own blue-green hotel, um, you don't have to pay the resort fee right. per day, which is around here is like 50 bucks. So yeah. Tropicana was our first choice because it was a little bit nicer, but that would have been 200 bucks extra. 50 bucks a day, for the yeah. Four days. So. so we picked blue-green, I mean, we, sorry, we picked Club 36, which is right across from your work at the airport. So that was kind of convenient, but... Yeah, and it's a little off the strip. So yeah, we found out they do a shuttle every day, multiple. Mm. <laughs> they do a shuttle like every half hour to the strip. So it wasn't going to be a problem. We would just have to ride the shuttle over to go over and do the stuff we wanted to do. Here's what we thought of the hotel. Apparently Blue Green bought it from somebody and it was like apartments or something. Overall on a scale of like one to five, or like five star hotel, I'd say this was like three. I would have given it a, a two. Okay. At the very highest. Yeah, it was not the best hotel and it's in this little like strip mall type thing. So there's a subway, there's an ABC store, which is like a convenience store, a liquor store, a two to three star hotel. Two. <laughs> and here's the reason. Uh, the When you walk in, it's okay. Everyone's real nice, but no. then you go down the hall, mm. the walls are dark gray, the trim is black. You don't paint trim black, I'm sorry. Mm. Like it's ghetto, it shows all the imperfections, and it it just looks horrible. And it the took other us... thing, low ceilings. Low ceilings. Which just feels like a prison. It feels yeah. ghetto and not comfortable at all. Mm -hmm. And you know, usually when you go to a hotel, it's like, okay, unless you're at like the MGM Grand or some of these bigger hotels, you know, you got to walk away to get to your elevator. This was like that, but it was a small hotel. So you expect to go make a right and there's elevators. It took oh, us... Oh, we like, almost got lost a couple times and you get way down yeah. the hall and wraps them in and around. And it's like... It was bizarre. Pretty bizarre. And then when we finally got to our floor, it was the same thing. We're going all over the place and it's just sketchy. It doesn't give you a good feeling. Yeah. And when we walked into our room, the room was fine. It's like this one bedroom. I think you got some B-roll, right? Yeah. So it's yeah. It's just kind of cold feeling. I forgot. There's going to be B-roll throughout this video so you can see what I <laughs> did. <laughs> when you walk into the room, it's okay. It's a one bedroom, one bath, kind yeah, of. Kind of one bath, two shower. Yeah. Anyway, weird layout. And again, clean, I guess, but... There was no, it was no carpet, no carpet. The styling was just kind of, eh, whatever. And I didn't feel comfortable. Um, I wouldn't have ever stayed there again. I don't care how cheap it was. Yeah. We like pretty updated, nice places. You want to feel comfortable when you're just hanging out and yeah, it, it wasn't great. The AC kind of worked, but it fought you all the time. Like you always had to go back over and like reset it. I, I guess all that to say, I, I thought it was a pretty ghetto room. Yeah. Not everyone's gonna think that. So I, I've got a kind of kind of a high standard. They did have some cool parts though. There's this well, they have an indoor pool, which this time of year in Vegas, I think an outdoor pool is ideal, but you know, their indoor pool is heated year round, which could be nice in the winter. But they had this like uh, deck, sun deck, I think is what they call it. Rooftop deck. Rooftop deck. And that was probably the coolest part of the whole whole hotel was that it overlooked the runways and so a great little spot to watch planes which is something we love to do so the downside though is that planes are taking off and landing all night 
So you're constantly hearing them no matter where you are in the hotel. Another Those downside are. was the shuttle. We were hanging out in a spot like a seating area and thought, okay, the shuttle is going to pull up right over here. But it turns out it's like way over there and on the street kind of. So we ended up missing it. The, the first time it came around, it was and it's every confusing. half hour. So yeah, that sucked. And we weren't the only ones. There was another couple that missed it. You got to check into your hotel but before you do that you have to go to this other what do you call it guest yeah guest services area uh, yeah basically they know you're there for a promotional stay and they've got to get some paperwork in so i i got a copy of it but essentially what they do right off the bat is they have you fill out this guest registration form and i definitely looked it over as i was filling it out but they take down all your information to do a credit check and have you sign a deal saying if you don't follow through with the entirety of mm -hmm. the two hour presentation and tour, you're gonna pay full retail value for this day up to $979 it says. So they say that when they pull your credit, it's not gonna ding your credit, it's just to see if you're pre-qualified for some of the offers they're gonna give. So you can expect to put down your information for them to do that. And then, again, it says in the contract, an approximately two-hour blue-green vacations club sales presentation and tour of the benefits of timeshare ownership. So you're signing saying you're going to show up or you're going to pay basically a thousand bucks for for your stay. At a ghetto hotel. And you're not going to get the gifts that they offered and all mm -hmm. that. So. They, they have language in here as well that says if you're married or living with your significant other, they have to attend with you. Uh, and that's kind of the gist of it. But that's, that's how it started. And then they give you a little slip that says, here's your date and time. Yeah, they basically tell you, like, here, here's what time you're going to show up tomorrow. Yeah. And for us, it was 11.30 a.m. the next day. And we thought, should be fine. Yeah. Two hours, good to go. So then we get to the next day, the present. Yeah, we go in and it's super it's, weird. Like you go and you, you sign in and there's a bunch of other people, other couples that are sitting there. And, and then all the people that work there kind of look like they're in the mafia. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> just you got that vibe. Yeah. Big dudes in suits that have their hair slicked back and stuff and mm -hmm. felt kind of like a car dealership. Very much. Yeah. And so they say, okay, go ahead and sit down. Oh, do you want a fresh baked cookie? So they give you a cookie, which it wasn't that good. Um, so you sit down and then all these salespeople start coming out and calling different couples back. So we get a lady, she calls our names and we have the kids with us. So, um, yeah, our they kids did, are seven and nine. They did great for the most part. They, yeah, but, we, we were prepared Yeah. to have them with us, but they ended up giving them some crayons and coloring pages and all that. So they really, lots of snacks. Yeah. They kind of poured it on it. From the get-go. From the get-go, yeah, just really... Yeah. So we walk back, and it's this big room with all the... It kind of felt like an office, like an open space office. Big open... Just picture a bunch of cubicles, but no cubicles. It's yeah. just a bunch of desks and... And they're playing, like, pop music, and everyone's, like, bubbly and super fun, and we're, like, walking back, kind of, like, taking all this in, and our ladies like, asking us all these questions about ourselves. Which, that it seemed to be that phase, where... Your salesperson sits yeah. you down, they start getting you talking. It's fun. Here's some drinks and snacks. Mm -hmm. And and then they get you talking like, so are you, you guys love to vacation? And they start, I think the idea of this part was to just get you talking and get you dreaming. They're trying to get you in this mindset of, yeah, we love to vacation. Here's some of our dream spots. We've always wanted to go to, and you know, they're, they're, they're getting yeah. you talking in that vein of, of thought. And I think that lasted what? five, 10 minutes. If that, and then they're like, that. okay, come back to this room. And all of it was just like sensory overload. Mm -hmm. And then we had another guy that was talking to us and then we're like trying to wrangle the kids and we go back and we go into this room that obviously is set up for a presentation. And we were like, okay, you know, mentally prepared for this is the, the part where they give us the spiel. So we go and sit down and they're like, are you guys okay? You know, what do you need? Do you need snacks? And just like, didn't even have a second to think or like, 
yeah, not I was like, talk. Yeah, we're we're fine, we're fine, we're good. Thanks so much. Yeah, <laughs> it was bizarre. And then there was about I don't know five or six other couples that came in, sat down, and then the guy started the presentation. Yeah, and this guy again was big, loud, very charismatic, and he, I think, gave a one-hour presentation. He had some slides, but the the essence of his portion was to connect personally and inspire and to kind of pull on your heartstrings a little bit. He was, uh, he basically was talking about all we really have in, in life is time with our loved ones. And the thing we should value most are the memories we create with them and the places we go and the things we do together. And yeah. you can't put a price tag on that, but unfortunately there is a price tag and that's where blue or green vacations comes in is they're trying to set it up to where you have a plan to be able to pay for those things and never let them be something you you don't do because it's so important that you make time to go on vacation with your loved ones and the whole time he's you know he's interacting with all of us sitting out and yeah he's calling everyone has a name, name tag, tag so he yeah. does the oh you know jesse don't you know like time's important and it was just so cheesy yeah and he even was interacting with our kids and they were just like <laughs> And they got kind of put on the spot and couldn't <coughs> respond to his questions. But, you know, he was really just pouring it on, trying to get the emotions going and, and create that personal connection. The impression we got was, you know, we already know the value of our time and experiences together. And he came across as a, a used car salesman trying to get us into this sweet car. Yeah. It didn't really work on us, but I think the intent, again, was to just get you excited about what they're offering and to go, you know what, yeah, this is going to cost us some money, but it's a good plan it's worth it. that's going to force us to go out and live life to the best of our ability and create these all-important memories that, you know, mm -hmm. we're going to have forever. We go out of our room and our gal's waiting there. This lady, super nice, uh, but... Everyone's every, super nice. Yeah, yeah, everyone there is super nice, and every used car salesman or any salesman that's trying to get you to buy their product is going to be really nice if they're good. So she goes, we go sit back in her little desk. She, you know, oh, do you guys want snacks? Like, still very accommodating. And to just sum up this portion, this was like where they get into the nitty gritty of um, where do you want to go on vacation? Where and do you want to go, costs and all that. But yeah, they. It's back into that like dream phase. Yes. And they're actually writing down all these places. So where where are your top five places? Top five places to go and. And she asked that like five times, and we're like. Mm -hmm. I think she was kind of new. She didn't seem yeah. to be really in the zone. It, yeah. You know, we were just kind of rolling with it, and and then from there we we were taken on a tour. So. I think they were kind of shuffling people out. Yeah. And that way not everyone was going on the tour at once. They kind of killed a little time a back at the table with yeah. this gal. And then we got to go on our tour. And we were shown the one bedroom, the studio. There was a three bedroom. Yeah. At we, this specific hotel. And that's the thing they push all the time. It's like, oh, we have 60 different locations in the u.s yeah but if you do if you want to book with one of our partners here's your options and it bumps up to like 200 locations but with that you have to pay extra a Resort little bit fees, extra that yeah kind of thing and there's places all over the world it, yeah essentially essentially that what they were trying to say is oh you said you want to go to japan well we can send you there and we can make that a reality for you mm -hmm. so so yeah, at the end of the tour, it was about the two hour mark, maybe a little past that in fact. So I was definitely checking my watch all the whole time and I thought, they're after two hours, but let's just see how long it goes. Cause mm -hmm. we were totally there to just experiment. Come back from the tour and that's when some other guy came over. He, he had a suit on and he seemed like her boss or he's one of the top dogs and he's checking in on us and all that. And eventually they start sliding these offers across the table. Yeah. I wanted to, basically share the offers that they were making and then the math that I did to kind of show what it's really costing um, just because I don't know if you've ever been to a used car dealer and or any car dealer you're buying a car and they ask you that question how much of a payment do you want and you you start thinking well I can afford 500 a month they can take any purchase price and put it 
with an interest rate and a loan term and give you that exact payment. They can give you whatever payment you want. But what you don't think about is what you're actually going to have to pay. If you do the math, mm -hmm. you're paying varying amounts depending on what they're doing with those the, the loan terms. So it's just a dangerous thing to not do the math and, and see what you're actually paying over time. Yeah. So first offer, I think they checked our credit and they're like, okay, these guys have good credit. We're going to give them the VIP offer. And they're using the language. And that's when I start to roll my eyes a little bit. <laughs> not outwardly, but they offer... 20,000 points and so to just put this in context they don't sell you days at a resort they don't sell you uh, any specific amount of time they sell you a points package and I'll just tell you up front I tried four five maybe six times to get an idea of what exactly is a point worth and they the, as much as they would tell me is it really depends on how you use it. You can, you can say, okay, 4,000 points is about a week's worth, but you could, you could get more or less depending on the resort you're using and, and whatever else. Yeah. And I thought, well, what's a week? Is that five days or seven? Mm -hmm. And I was trying to probe multiple times to get an idea. They never said what these points are actually worth. And that was a huge red flag because they were being vague not specific. I had no idea what I was actually buying. They didn't explain mm -hmm. it all. How availability works. You know, are you going to be able to use these points anytime, any place you want? And yep. it was just very mysterious. Yeah, they never said like, okay, so for example, you want to go to the Smoky Mountains in Tennessee for seven days, six nights. At our resort here, it's going to cost you X amount of points. They never gave they us never that kind of that. information. So. 20,000 points, is that one vacation? I mean, it, it all depends on where you go and how you use your points. And they also said that your points is always going to get you the same thing throughout time. So no points inflation, they claim. But I don't think, again, yeah. it's like, well, what is a point? And like, it, anyway, they offer 20,000 points for $46,500. And at first I was like, I have no idea what that actually looks yeah. like. <laughs> but you could break it down... Um, they said 4,000 points is maybe a week or whatever. So you're looking at five weeks for 46,500 bucks. And that, I mean, that's a pretty, it seems like a good deal. Uh, what that breaks down to is $2 and 33 cents a point. And then they want you to put 20% down plus a $450 fee. So up front, they wanted 9750 just call it 10,000 bucks. And then your payments would be 782 a month for seven years, 84 <laughs> payments. The interest rate on that was 17.99. So the total yes. you're actually paying over the term of the loan or the, the seven years of the loan is 75,438 bucks, which is a true cost of $3.77 per point. On top of that, you have to pay maintenance and dues they quoted $162 a month, but that those are subject to change. They could go up or down, probably up over time because of the cost of maintenance and dues. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what you're looking at for this VIP package. The next one they offer, because we were like, you know what, that's too much. You know, we did that. Well, and, then, and they do the thing, like you, your example about like how much do you want to pay a month? They tell us, okay, so that's $782 a month. And they're like, okay, so can you afford that? Do you want to afford that? Like they they keep putting it back on us if if we like that number. And then well, no, they they pitched this one, and then they their next question was, "How do you want to take care of the ninety seven fifty today?" Oh, sure, and I was I like, about that. <laughs> I, "I don't, don't. want to <laughs> actually." Like, with, uh, yeah, and we went into this knowing like we're <clears> not yeah we going to do a timeshare, but we were like so interested to see kind of how they work. Yeah, and the interesting thing too, which just felt so like pretentious and self-righteous was they have a bell so if somebody like had we decided to sign up we get to go ring this bell and then everyone all the salespeople stop what they're doing and clap yeah they hype it up they hype it up and it just was gross the next thing they offer is sixteen thousand points so i guess that's one week less than ish than before the cost was thirty thousand dollars two hundred or 
which is a cost of $1.89 a point. Somehow it went way down. Interesting. They want 10% down plus $4.50, so you put down $3,478. That comes out to $473-ish a month for, a, for, for 10 years. That's the term of this loan, 120 payments at 16.99% interest. So the total cost, if you did all your payments and all that, is $60,293 if you did all those payments, which is a cost of $377 per point. Same as the one before. So I thought, oh, that's interesting. It's way cheaper if you just pay cash for this thing, but if you if you do the loan, you're paying the same per point as the initial offer. So again, we work and we say, oh, well, it's too much, we're buying a house, we gotta you know, preserve our monthly cash flow, that kind of thing. So I said, okay, how about 10,000 points? And that's, uh, you're talking about two, two and a half weeks of vacation time per year, maybe. <laughs> and that one costs $25,500, which is $2.55 a point. So it jumped way up per point on that one, more than the initial VIP offer which again, I'm doing all this math as I'm sitting there and I'm like, what the heck is going on yeah. with these numbers? They want 10% down, $450 processing fee. So $3,000 down and about 399 a month for again, 10 years, 16.99% interest. Your total comes to $50,846, which is a true cost of $5.08 per point. So it's going through the roof now. If you look at your, your actual value, and the maintenance package, it was $103 a month. So I'm glad to see the maintenance and dues at least going down, but your cost per point is just kind of all over the place. We continue to tell them like, ah, it's just too much or whatever. So then they say, well, how about 10,000 every other year? And I did the math on 5,000 points per year just to keep things even. That package was gonna cost $15,010, which is a cost of $3 a point. So the highest of any of them. 10% down, $450 fee, they wanted 1951 as a down payment. And then 230, about 235 a month for 10 years, 16.99% interest rate. The total for that one would be $30,115, which is a true cost of $6.02 per point. And that's over triple if you just paid cash for the $16,000 package. Dues and maintenance and dues on that last one was $73 a month. So here's the takeaway for me on all that. The numbers are all over the place. Uh, there's no consistency as far as what you're paying for the actual points. And then the dues and maintenance are something you're going to pay forever. Um, <clears throat> if you want out of one of these things, the only way to get out is to go to a broker that specializes in helping people get rid of their timeshare and basically they're going to sell it for pennies on the dollar to some other person that i mean it could be getting a good deal if they get it for cheap enough but again they're going to have to be paying for the maintenance and dues for the rest of their life and again those can go up whenever they decide they want to raise the rates basically this whole the whole idea of this is you're prepaying for vacations what you're paying for those vacations i don't actually know and you can never get out of this deal. On top of that, you're dealing with sort of a mysterious process where you don't know what's gonna be available and when. And from what we've heard, a lot of people end up losing points because they expire after each year because they're trying to go to, let's say this, this one spot they're trying to go to or where they're trying to find a location to go to with their available vacation dates and they just can't find anything available. So it's like, well, it's, it's not going to work out. You end up losing those points. They say you can gift them to other people if you don't end up using them, but I don't, I'm not trying to send any of my family on a vacation. So, um, <laughs> And we do know we have several family members that have had timeshares for, you know, 30 years, and they have figured out how to work that system, and it works for them. And so I think for some people, timeshares definitely work, but... Overall, we feel like it's not worth the money. You're basically paying the going rate for the first 10 years. Like while yeah. you're paying for this package, you're paying what anyone else would if they just went out and booked a hotel. In theory, after this thing is paid off, 
over time, you could end up spending less if you continue to go on vacations. But again, you're locked into these maintenance and dues payments and actually booking the places you want may or may not be a total nightmare. Hey, they said all you have to do is call this 1-800 number. You'll get a live person. Oh, the concierge? The concierge that you just tell them where you want to go and when, and they'll make it happen. The, and here's the thing is, there's no way to verify what people's actual experiences are. Yeah. And you're going into it just trusting that they're going to take good care of you. I would never do that. I want yeah. to be in control of my vacations. And to me, yeah. the savings don't start until 10 years out. And that's the same for like solar panel packages. We've been looking at those. Those start to pay for themselves after 10 years. Electric vehicle, we can get one. Yeah. We can get a vehicle that works for half the cost. So the savings on an electric vehicle don't start until 10 years out. That's when you start to yield a return on this investment over the normal way of doing things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that can be a huge advantage when it comes to investing, but this is too shady. Too many questions they're not being upfront about the value of what you're actually buying so all in yeah. all well yeah and before i mean like i said earlier we knew going in we weren't going to do this and so we the gal you know she's like okay i'll give you a few minutes and it was just so awkward because we're right here and she's literally like maybe like three seats over just kind of sitting there twiddling her thumbs waiting for us to like give her the the cue to come back so that was just super awkward and you know she kept like whispering in like a low voice, like, okay, like, what do you got? Well, they're doing the full salesman tactic. Yeah. I know toward the end, they really started pouring it on. Like, well, cause they we never do this for anyone, but they're going to give you a special deal. Yeah. You know, they're doing all this. Cause and we, we initially said, no, we're going to pass. We're buying a house. Yeah. Um, and then she said, okay, well, let me go, let me go talk to, you know, my boss. And then, and then he kept coming over back and comes forth. Over, yeah. All in all, this whole thing. <laughs> took three and a half hours. Yeah. Which I wasn't offended. We go, we went into it with an open mind. Like we, I think we said to each other, like, it let's get be, ready for yeah. eight hours. Yeah. Because that was some of the horror stories we heard on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And we heard stories about people being super aggressive, like the salespeople getting in your, just crossing the line and being aggressive and trying to sell you something. So we were pre prepared for the worst. But still, they said a two-hour presentation, three and a half hours was well over that and i didn't appreciate that yeah so <laughs> yeah and after we said no we had two different guys come like the boss and then the manager oh, yeah, the come. Upper, upper boss or whatever. yeah and hey they were gonna throw in two weeks for a cruise and a oh, yeah. hundred or no a thousand dollars towards airfare but again it was all, a lot of all the that. all these offers he, he could have said i'll give you a million points and we're like what is the value to points yeah, like none of it we were like a thousand dollar airfare. Like, what are the restrictions? I mean, they just make it sound so sweet, they and just it's just throw so out vague. Offers, but don't give you any of the details. And you know, yeah, it's anyway. <laughs> if if you own a timeshare, maybe you've figured it out. You've made it work for you. We have nothing against anyone who sees value in these things. Yeah, we I just, gotta, I'm a numbers guy. I'm a nerd. I yeah. cannot get the math to work for me personally. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. I think that's the, the end of our story. We could probably keep going on and on, and this is probably already a very long video, but we would love to hear if you guys have any experience with timeshares, if you have one. Um, I have got to enjoy my aunt's timeshare in Florida. It was great, but being on the other side of it as someone that was approached about potentially buying one, it's a hard no for us. Um, but yeah, we would love to hear if you guys have any stories about your experience with timeshares. So with that, hit a like button if you want, leave a comment. This is our family vlog channel, so subscribe if you want, and maybe we'll see you again soon.